this last video about materials, we're going to quickly discuss exporting and importing them and how to use the Material Ingest Manager for quicker, more seamless importing of textures to use with materials. First, let's look at saving a material we've already created. If you go to the node properties of a material, we have the second tab called Node. In here, you can use the Export as Material button to save a material to disk. All you have to do is select the location, then hit Save. If you would like to import a material on disk, then you just have to right click on your node graph, go down to File, Import Material, or if you want to bring it into the shelf, just drag it from your file browser into your personal shelf. To open up the Material Ingest tool, you need to go to Tools, Material Ingest. The Material Ingest tool lets you handily batch import images that you want to use for channels in a material, saving you the hassle of creating materials by hand every time you want to make a new one. From here, you define which channels Mari will search for images of, and at the bottom you can tell it where those images are and what to do with them. I'm going to import the images I use in our very first material video for this demonstration, but as you can see, you can import a wide variety of channels. First, let's change our shader model to principal BRDF. On the right of this, we can select if we want our search to be case sensitive. You can leave this on or off. If you have it off, make sure you have the correct case of the channels you're searching for below. After that, let's pick which channels Mari will look for. If we look in the folder with my images, I have a base color, a height, metallic, normal, and roughness. I'm going to ignore metallic as I know this can just be black as concrete is not at all metallic. If we go back to Murray, I'm going to untick every other channel by control selecting them all and then right clicking and unchecking selected. If you leave them on and Murray can't find an associated image, it will use whatever you have in the color swatch here as a default color, which you may want to do. On the right of that, we're going to tell it the suffix of the image file to search for. If you double click this, you can change it to whatever your images are named in your folder. For now, I'm going to use my height as bump to save my poor laptop from dying. Since you get to decide your naming patterns, if another program you used or online resource you got your images from names them differently, then you're able to change the naming pattern here and still ingest it with no problem. Finally, let's set up our ingest options at the bottom. The file name template has those weird dollar signs we saw in the export video. If you hover over this box, it will tell you what these wildcards stand for. In this instant, the default of dollar name will look for the same name of any materials in the folder, dollar stream, will look for the same naming patterns we just defined, and $ext will ingest any image regardless of the format. These will work just fine. Now you just have to change the search route path to wherever your images are located on disk and you're good to go. If you use dollar name and you have multiple sets of textures all with the same material prefixes, for example, concrete, stone, green painted metal, whatever you're using, it will create multiple materials for you at once based on those namings, saving you a lot of time. We have a few more options to decide what Murray actually does with these images. The ingest method can either save them somewhere on disk or bring them into your project. If you decide to export them to disk, you need to choose an export path. After that, you can choose if the images will be tiled or triplanar projected. There's more on the triplanar in the advanced tips videos. And then finally, you can add them to the shelf if you want. Selecting this drop down will let you pick where. I'll add this to personal for now. When I hit create materials, it will run for me. And as you can see, I now have this material on my shelf. And if I drag it into my node graph, we can also see that it's set up sliders for me, like tiling amount, instead of having to go in and manually promote it like we did in our first video. So that's our last video on materials in this quick look series at Mari 4.5. I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video where we dive into some more features to get you up and running with you.